Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL in Metro D.C. Also, Mark Levine, nationally syndicated radio talk show host and the Democratic nominee for the 45th District in the Virginia House of Delegates. This week, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton was in the hot seat for 11 hours, facing tough questions on the 2012 Benghazi attack, headed by Republican Representative Trey Gowdy. Why were there so many requests for more security personnel and equipment, and why were those requests denied in Washington? And the Democratic presidential hopeful was ready with an answer. Those requests and issues related to security were rightly handled by the security professionals in the department. I did not see them. I did not approve them. I did not deny them. Time and time again, Clinton said Ambassador Chris Stevens did not address her personally about requests for more security. Mark, as Secretary of State, should Hillary have been more involved with security matters? Absolutely not. I thought she explained it perfectly well during her hearing. She, her job was to run the entire department. You leave security to the security analysts. I've been saying to the president, hey, you should control your own secret service and make sure the secret service does specific security arrangements for the president. No, they have a job to do. They are the professionals. She had professionals. One thing she did do, though, is after the failures that did occur in Benghazi, there was a review board. She analyzed the problems and she revamped well, the Mark, that's easy to, to make say. it much Remember better now, in the future. Look, I agree. She clearly won this. I find myself in agreement with you in the Washington Post. To the extent breaking a, news. Yeah, so <laughs> Jack it is rare. Says she won. She to the extent there was a winner, Morris. There's no question she won. I'm not gonna. I call a spade a spade. Now this business about Libya. Libya was at the top of the policy agenda for this administration. The White House, the National Security Advisor, Hillary Clinton, Secretary of Defense. Everybody was very focused on that. She knew all about that embassy. One question. Wasn't an embassy. There's wasn't an even a consulate. Well, there's and that's part of the reason why it wasn't defended as well as it could have question she didn't answer. I think the most important question, she claims she talked she claims she talked to the ambassador. She claims she talked to him a number no, of she... times. There's nothing in the phone log. Her answer to the question was, yes, I believe I did. She can't say when. She can't even give a month, much less a day. Oh, uh, there's on, nothing Jack. in the phone log to support that. All right, it, it... comments between committee members got heated, especially over the release of Sidney Blumenthal's closed-door testimony. <laughs> um, Why conceal the transcripts? Even if the motion were not in order, you have the power to release them, you the power I, I'll to I'll tell right you why, now. because I'm not going to release one transcript of someone who knows nothing about Libya by his own admission, while people who risk their lives, you have no interest in their story getting out. You don't, want the, you don't want the 18 DS agents, you don't want the CIA agents. The only transcripts you want released are Ms. Mills and Sidney Blumenthal. Mr. Chairman, so the, we'll, the we'll only, take all of only, this up in The only in November. person you were interested in asking about during your entire questioning was Sidney Blumenthal. If you're so interested in him, release the transcript. Uh, you, you selectively released his emails. They're the only witness you've done that for. Uh, so you're asking why are we only asking for his I, transcript? I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask the gentleman from California to please do a better job of characterizing. These are not Sidney Blumenthal's emails. These are Secretary Clinton's emails. And I'll tell you what, if you think you've heard about Sidney Blumenthal so far, Wait till the next round. Sure, With that, we're adjourned. Now, Jack Gowdy seemed very hesitant to release the testimony. If Blumenthal is the smoking gun that Republicans think he is, why not release the transcripts? Yeah, why not, Jack? I think that's coming. I think it's coming. There could be security. Remember, it's the administration, Morris, who insisted upon heavy security for all of, all of this. Initially, they thought Hillary Clinton should testify in a closed-door session. They've been advocating a closed-door session for many people, so Gowdy has been accommodating their request, not the other <laughs> way around. The reason now they, they want to say, why isn't it released, when they're the ones that started the whole debate? The reason they want a closed-door session is because they don't want to show the ridiculous questions that they asked Sidney Blumenthal. That's why the Democrats say put it out in the open when you see it in the open when you see the ridiculous questions they asked secretary clinton you can see how ridiculous it is well they want it all the democrats say is, is if this is a fair investigation let's show it to the Mark, american people Republicans said agreement. no we don't want to show it to the and american people this is people. getting to be too inside baseball there goes sydney blumenthal i think for the most of the public they don't know or care who he he's is he's a friend who sent her some emails the issue here Full is stop. i agree with you morris the, the reason there's a lot here 
I think there are several smoking guns already There's revealed no about There's no smoking gun. There's not even Benghazi. smoke. The problem is, the problem is, just Morris hit the nail on the head, and that is that it's too complicated, it's too fact-intensive to yeah. present there this no in facts. a narrative. Well, there, no, 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 that's not fair, because if it's seven baseball, investigations, it's and they really, It's exonerated. really too obscure. It's, it's Washington walk. Through it all, Hillary remained calm and didn't even have more what difference does it make moments. Mark, was this a victory for her campaign, and does this put all of the Benghazi allegations to rest? Yes, yes, and yes. Hillary has had a great week, and I know I just got, came from meeting Hillary Clinton in my hometown of Alexandria. She had a great week in the debates. She had a great week in the Benghazi hearing. This will blow up in the Republicans' face. Everybody knows from Kevin McCarthy on down that this was a witch hunt to try to find something on Hillary, and there's nothing there, and the American people are no, tired no, of that's it. Way, Three that's quarters true. of you're, Americans you're think this have was a good politically case. investigated. Mark, you have a good case, but you're drastically overstating this. This was something that needed to be investigated. It was I investigated agree. seven times. I Jack. agree it went on too long, but one takeaway from this is she will carry a scar from Benghazi. No. The public no. doesn't want to hear more about it, but she will carry a serious no. scar as yet another scandal into the 2016 campaign. This will more be seen than, like whitewater. More than four million dollars have been spent on the Benghazi probe, and after this latest round of testimony, even Chairman Gowdy admitted nothing much was different from before. In terms of her testimony, I don't know that she testified that much differently today than she has the previous time she's testified. So I'd have to go back and look at the transcript. All right, Jack, before we move off of the uh, McCarthy hearings, I mean the Benghazi <laughs> hearings, uh, should the Republicans just let this go? Yeah, it's time. They should, they should let it go. They, I, I think it's more than time to let it go. Now, the issue is, remember, we learned, some, we learned some important things from all these hearings. We learned that the president hesitated. The president hesitated. He waited those crucial six or seven hours what? when people could have been sent no, in to help no, these people. No, stop we know, saying these things, Jack. They've been disproven again and again and again. That has never been disproven. The reaction of the White House to help these people was enormously slow, and the president she President specifically to, said that the military did everything they could. They didn't have assets in the area. Did you watch what she said? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Many things. The, the, the response was, the response was ridiculously slow. Benghazi? And the president was, was slow to call this terrorism for political reasons. It was uh, 50 Jack, days before the election. you can keep beating this dead horse all you want. No one buys it. Everyone knows this is political. Well, it is time to move on. Republicans will stick with their story. Democrats will keep supporting Hillary. That's the bottom line that we're learning. Let's move on. Joe Biden is letting go of his 26 presidential aspirations, delivering a heartfelt address from the Rose Garden. Unfortunately, I believe we're out of time, the time necessary to mount a winning campaign for the nomination. All right, Mark, you called it. You said from the very start that Biden would not run. Does this clinch the nomination for Hillary? I think it does. I mean, I, she should go through and she should absolutely get elected and go to Iowa and New Hampshire. And maybe Bernie Sanders would even win New Hampshire, possibly. But she's absolutely clinched the nomination. She will be the Democratic nominee. I think she'll be our next president. Jack, we kept going back and forth. We thought Jumpin' Joe would jump in. Yeah. No, I, I was dead wrong, Morris. I predicted for two years he would. I mean, just as a pundit, I think it would have been a good race. It's good news for Republicans. It's very good news for Hillary, and it's also excellent news for Republicans. We would much rather run against her with all of her baggage, the emails in Benghazi and the foundation. The foundation scandal hasn't even started yet. We would much rather face her than Joe Biden. Joe Biden's a guy that's well-liked by everybody. We there's Democrats not a, will there's miss not Uncle a single Joe. member right. of the United States well, Senate that doesn't after, love him. After Biden said he was out, Republican frontrunner Donald Trump tweeted, I think Joe Joe Biden made the correct decision. I would rather run against Hillary because her record is so bad. So, Jack, you nailed it. You think that uh, is and if, is Trump going to get your party's nomination? And do you think he could take on Hillary? I think he will. I think he's the best matchup for Hillary. Trump's uh, Trump's just uh, the the reason he's such an advantage in the general Morris is that Trump has been pro-choice uh, much of his career. Uh, you know, he's changed on that. He's given good reason for it. But a lot of women may still perceive him to be pro-choice. That's almost an ideal candidate, a Republican who can credibly make the case both ways. Politically, that's a strategist's dream. We dream of having candidates like that. I told you from the beginning, I would love, as a Democrat, to see Donald Trump as Republican nominee. I think he is not a serious person or a serious candidate. And Republicans want to Why nominate him. Why is he not a serious Terrific. person? Why is he not a serious because person? Because he doesn't even have any policies, Jack. He doesn't know what he thinks. But he, you, he, you know, he changes his mind think, every I mean, moment. He, well, you he, know, he's going to have to come up with him in the next few months. And for months, Trump has been leading in the polls, detracting from the Republicans' presumptive nominee, Jeb Bush. Now Bush is cutting payroll costs to keep his campaign afloat. 
Jack, how bad are things for Jeb? No, I think they're getting bad. We had presumed that uh, we had presumed that he had money to go the distance. That was always seen as his strength. Now, there's one strength left for him we're not talking about, one big advantage, and that is the super PAC. I don't think a lot of people realize how much money. He's got over $100 million in super PACs ready to fire. Now, these super PACs are things that aren't supposed to be aligned with campaigns, but of course, we know they are aligned with campaigns. Bush has more money than even Hillary Clinton, and that's hard to believe. So Bush, Bush has the capability to stay in this race for a long time. He'll, he'll, he has the money. He'll continue to raise money despite this uh, seeming financial setback this week. Uh, but I just don't think he'll go anywhere. Je uh, Mark, you want to make a quick prediction? This is the Jeff problem Bush? with Citizens United. This is the problem with politics being based on which billionaires support which candidates well, and not that, which Americans think, do. You think we're going to see Jeb continue on in the race? I think we will see yeah. him continue. I think he's been an extremely weak candidate. He, frankly, weaker than even I had predicted. Yeah. But I do think I he will continue for at least a, at least into March. At least way past Super Tuesday. All right, let's switch gears to another upcoming election. Representative Paul Ryan said he will run for Speaker of the House after doling out a list of conditions to his party, including a better work life balance. He's one of the few Republicans who has support from both sides of the aisle. Mark, what do you make of his candidacy? Well, it's interesting. I thought Paul Ryan was too smart to run because I think that trying to control the Republican Party is an impossible task. The thing I found most interesting, though, was in the work-life balance. Paul Ryan wants to see his wife and kids. I get it. I respect it. But he votes against paid family leave for the rest of America. Oh, this is typical Republican hypocrisy. Oh. He wants to be able to see his family. He doesn't want any Americans to see their oh, family. This you is the problem with the Republican Party. You can't, give it, you can't give it a rest. Well, Morris, I have another, I have another candidate I might suggest. Well, let me, let me get to that before you take our headline away because we were the first to report it this week on Capital Insider. You also officially threw your hat into the ring to become speaker. Yes. And with no conditions, you, could, you wrote a letter to John Boehner. Why do you think you could do a better job than Ryan? Uh, simply put, more, more experience. I have been a lobbyist, uh, Morris, for more than 20 years. I've done more than a thousand clients. I think I have more legislative experience than anyone who would throw their hat in the ring, inclu including Paul Ryan, who's been a member for 17 years. But I'll say this to Paul. Uh, Paul's been a friend of mine for two decades. He knows very well that the conditions he put, including the, the fact that there can be no recall, that he, he somehow would have absolute power in the House, almost like a king. He knows that you can't trump the Constitution that way. Congress couldn't even do that if it wanted to. It's an absolutely silly condition. I really think, Morris, anybody putting that kind of condition on becoming Speaker really shouldn't be Speaker. Mark, if you were a Republican, would you vote for Jack as House Speaker? <laughs> if I were, I would never be a Republican. I'll tell you this. I, I would like not vote for Jack. But I'll tell you this, if he's going to run, why shouldn't I run? Elect me and I'll get handed over to Nancy Pelosi. We need Democratic votes. Job. If this goes to the floor, we'll need Democratic votes. <laughs> Mark Levine, Democratic strategist. Jack Berkman, vote early, vote often for him. Republican strategist, <laughs> the best political panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank Thanks, you, Boris. guys. Jack. We turn